Hi guys, uh, this video today is about how I complete my watercolor painting process with ink. Okay, uh, but before we continue, please make sure you like, subscribe, and you can share anything from my social media. So on YouTube, I'm Paul Garrison. On Instagram, I'm Paul Garrison Art, one word, lowercase. On Facebook, I'm Paul Garrison Art or Paul Garrison Art and Design. Uh, and on TikTok, I'm Slick Rick Bob Ross. So that would be S L I C K R I C K B O B R O S S. Yeah, and I'll have that information all here in text for you also. Okay, so first we have to talk about the materials that we're going to use. Obviously, you need a good pencil eraser. Okay, uh, for my I use a mechanical pencil, so I've got my lead replacements here, I've got my replacements here, the eraser, like I said, and I've got the sharpener. All right, that's going to be for the first stage, basically. Uh, after we use that, we'll use watercolor paints. Uh, I'm going to use watercolor pencils and then get them wet. You'll see that later. You can use any kind of watercolor paints that you want. Uh, you can use watercolor paints from a tube, which are usually already liquid. Uh, you can use watercolor cakes. Uh, I use this method the best and the most comfortably right now. Uh, you might need masking tape. Okay, You might need to tape down the edges of your watercolor paper, paper number one, so it does not curl and warp and curve. Number two, so that you have a nice border or a nice margin that's very solid around that. And you can paint right on top of the tape and remove it and you'll have that nice solid line. Right? I won't be using the tape you'll see in the video today because I have this style of paper which has adhesive here and it has adhesive here. So specifically for watercolor painting, it's called watercolor block paper. And when it's block paper, it means they have the type of adhesive that's on all notebooks on the top, right? It's just glue adhesive, but they have it here and they have it on the bottom. Some of my pads have it on all four sides. This one is only on two, which I find is fine. So I won't be using any tape at all and I can draw and paint directly on this without any curling problems. Uh, after we watercolor paint, we'll be using ink. So, uh, with ink, there's what I have is a variety of sizes. It goes from thick to thin, and then I also have a brush here. You can use one, you don't have to have all of these options, but this is a 0.8, probably goes 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, or 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and this is a brush. All right, so I have a whole variety here. Uh, we'll talk about that more later in the later stages. So there's three stages for my painting process, right? Stage one is with pencil and eraser. Stage two is with watercolor paint. Then you let that dry and you can apply ink with the micron pens. This is my own process that I kind of developed myself. I'm sure many, many people have used it in the same way and all, but I, and all that stuff. I'm sure it's very common, uh, but this is somewhat self-taught in as much as I never took a class for watercolor painting. I took a class for other types of paintings and I didn't use a resource for this. This was just a trial and error process that I learned myself, although it's probably very common with a lot of people. It's a common process. Um, so first, we're gonna start with stage one, okay? It's gonna be pencil and the eraser. So we'll go there now. The first thing you wanna make sure you do is you check your framing for your paper. You want to look at the landscape that you're observing and you want to plan where you're going to paint on the inside of your paper. So I'm gonna have a, basically a circular or maybe a diamond shaped design that's gonna go here in the middle, okay? And the second thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have a comfortable seating position to view your subject during the time that you're drawing, okay? If you start drawing and a couple minutes into it, your legs hurt or it's uncomfortable, you have to move your hand, you're gonna be aggravated, that's gonna stop you, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna mess with that. So you gotta make sure you find a good um, position. All right, so, guys, so my subject is gonna be this brown house with the three triangular points, okay? Right there uh, on top, right below the white houses, all right? So I wanna give you an idea of my position. Uh, this is my roof and this is the chair that I'm gonna use, okay? So I'm seated here, and I'm directly in front of my subject there. And here we go. I usually sit like this with my leg folded. I've got my page right here, and my subject is directly above. All right, so I'm comfortable. Uh, I know I can draw in this position well, and that's what you need to do. You can use a table or something like that if you would like. Also, while you're completing this pencil stage, uh, the first thing is you wanna make sure that you work very, very lightly. Okay, that's one of the most important things. You've got to draw lightly. One, because you'll damage the paper if you do not do that. You won't be able to erase it. That pencil will stay there forever. When you apply the watercolor later, it's gonna make it dark and ugly, okay? Four, you don't need it. You don't really need it. All you need is enough pencil to understand the visual information. And if you have a good reference photo, right? Like I said before, if you have a good reference photo, you don't need every single detail reflected with that pencil right away in this early stage. So draw lightly. Okay, so remember during the stage, you're gonna want a minimum amount of pencil. You don't need a lot of pencil, you just need enough pencil to communicate that visual information so you can apply watercolor and ink later. This is gonna be very important. The next piece of advice is to erase often, all right? 
Uh, you don't do everything correctly, perfectly the first time. You're not supposed to. That's not how drawing works. That's not how life works. The eraser is the most important thing. So make sure you erase often. Okay, you want to experiment, you want to try many different kinds of lines and ways of communicating visual information. The important thing about that is you edit it, you eliminate that stuff that doesn't work. So if you draw lightly and you have an eraser, you'll be able to do that easily. So during this stage one, one of the most important things is you want to work from a low amount of detail or general shapes to a high amount of detail. So you start with those background shapes, you start with those main, uh, most obvious forms, lines, and whatever else you see in your subject that you're drawing, right? And then you work your way to the finer details. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to do this. Um, it helps you just save time. We'll just sum up with that. Okay, uh, this is another really helpful piece of advice that's kind of difficult to wrap your mind around and it's difficult to put in place, but it's very, very beneficial if you can do it. What you want to do is you have your paper that you're drawing on and you want to pretend like this is a transparent piece of glass, okay? And you hold that paper up to your subject and you pretend like this is a transparent piece of glass so you can see that subject through the glass. And your job as an artist is to trace what you see on the page. Since our main goal here or one of our goals here is realism, right? If we pretend this is a piece of glass and we simply trace those shapes, right? Trace those shapes. So as you're working your way to those details, remember to work lightly and remember that you're going to have to make some decisions. Based on how you see, based on your perspective, based on what you're looking at, you're going to have to make some decisions about how you reflect that information, okay? So this is basically developing your style and you're going to have to decide, do I want to have a more relaxed style of drawing, the process of drawing is loose, relaxed, um, more improvisational, or do I want to have a systematic method of analyzing what I'm looking at and checking the coordinates and doing that in a systematic way. That's a decision that you're going to have to make that's going to be a, uh, something that impacts your style, right? You won't choose one or the other and you know ignore one. You'll find a, a balance somewhere in there, like 70% observational and 30% realistic. I'm probably close myself, I'm probably closer to 60% and 40%, right? And you can see many examples of this style of landscape drawing on my social media. You can just go find it there. Next. Remember that your lines are going to be with ink. So the style of your lines, the exact way the lines work, aren't really important right now with pencils. That will be important when you apply ink when you use those micron pens. That's also true for the value or the shading, okay? Uh, probably right now the pencil isn't going to be used to communicate most of the value or shading. That will be with the watercolor tones that you use, and it will be with the ink. All right. So now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up my pencil. I'm erasing everything I don't need. Just generally cleaning up, erasing the white space, making sure it doesn't have any smudges or anything like that. Just so that when I go to apply my watercolor, there isn't any extra graphite or pencil there that causes problems. Welcome to stage two. If you are wanting to paint in plain air, that means you would continue for the rest of the artwork outside viewing your actual subject and your actual scene that you're painting. One thing you want to remember on this step when you start to paint is you work as dry as possible. I know that seems a little weird, but if you, one of the biggest dangers is that you get too wet and that you want to avoid. So the key is to work as dry as possible during this time. Be sure to look at your reference photo and make sure your brightness on your screen is good and your color is set up good on that reference photo so you can look at your reference. That's if you're not doing in plain air. If you need more help with watercolor, uh, right now I don't have any watercolor tutorial. Maybe that will come later, but you can look online and find lots of different uh, techniques and just kind of basic styles, uh, basic techniques, basic methods for creating different kinds of watercolor um, marks and effects and textures and those kinds of things. Also in this stage, you don't want to work too fast. I would suggest you go as slow as possible. The slower you go with the lightest colors, the smallest changes at a time, the better it's going to be. Uh, but on the same note, you want to stay dry. Don't get too wet. You want to combine different techniques. And you also want to experiment. You want to have a scrap paper, something like this to experiment with so you know what it will look like first before you apply that to your real work. The fundamentals, the basics of watercolor are layering, color layering, right? And also mixing colors. You want to mix colors and not use what you have out of the box exactly. You want to uh, change the tints and the hues of those colors just a little bit. Whenever it's too wet, whenever you start to get the little balls of paper on the surface of your sheet, uh, you know you overworked your artwork. Uh, you don't want to do that. So that's why I say, again, to work as dry as possible. Another thing to remember is now you want to work from light to dark. 
okay? You start with your light, lightest tones. In my case, it's going to be yellow and light green. And you'll go to your darkest tones. And with the watercolor for me, that's going to be the brown and the black. If you're using watercolor pencils, this is a technique you can use. Make a small palette of color on a scrap piece of paper, get it wet, and you can use that to then apply to your artwork. Enter stage three. Make sure your watercolor is dry before you start with the ink, okay? Make sure it's completely dry. Not just dry to the touch, not just dry when you touch it, but completely dry, okay? That means uh, like maybe dry to the touch so you feel it it feels dry and then maybe three four five six more hours If you put a fan on it or you put it somewhere outside where there's wind blowing it will speed up that process But it should be completely dry Remember again to work slowly working slowly helps you avoid mistakes that waste a whole lot of time So you just want to work very slowly very very gradually even with the pens I always start with the brush pen first. That allows me to do the textures on the leaves and the trees and the other natural elements um, in a very organic way. And it's also the thickest. So I start with that dark, dark, thick brush pen lines. You should start with the prominent features, the main forms, the main shapes, and then you should work your way to the small details. For me, that means usually I start with the thicker pins and then I work my way to the thinner pins. Another important thing to think about is that the stuff, the, the objects, the scenery that is closest to your perspective might be best with a thicker pin, right? Because it's closer to you. And the stuff that's in the background that's farther away from your perspective might be better with a thinner pin. That's the method that I use on my drawings. The final step is to apply hatching, cross hatching, or stifling to darken everything down uh, to those lowest low tones, those darkest blacks uh, that is usually in my final step. In some cases, you may want to go back in with watercolor on top of the ink and then ink again on top of the watercolor. Uh, if you see that that's necessary, you can go ahead and do that. I do that sometimes. I don't do that in this case, though. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you made a beautiful artwork. Uh, landscape painting is really, really fun. I think the process of doing it helps you be grounded in life and helps you be rational and stay real and think about the reality of your world and where you're at. Um, I hope the experience was beneficial for you. I hope you repeat the experience and, and you see that you'll get better at this. Um, and once again, thank you. Please like, subscribe, and share to all my stuff. Paul Garrison Art on Instagram. Paul Garrison Art and Design on Facebook. Paul Garrison on YouTube. And Slick Rick Bob Ross on 